Good morning, morning millennials, millennials, and welcome back to the toast. Happy Tuesday, Jax. How you doing? I'm doing good ish. Good ish. Go. Go. Okay, so here's my situation. I don't have a ton of clothes here right now, and so I'm kind of like cycled through everything I've worn it like once on the toast so I asked Claudia to bring me some sweaters today so I came in like leggings and a tank with like these cute sandals and she brought me the cardigans that she owns which is so sweet of her it's so sweet and so generous and what have you done since receiving my cardigans trashed them because they're so ugly and it's not your fault you You are so mean you brought the car you brought cardigans I brought you the clothes off my back yeah literally you now own all of my cardigans yeah, I must, it's probably not that hard for you to part with them because they're they're so, so stunning. I love them all. You're a bitch. <laughs> like I hate how I look today, so that's why I'm not great because I hate how I look. Even though I got a blood and a haircut yesterday, I was so excited to be on the toes, and I just have nothing to wear. I can't wait for the comments to roll and be like, "Jackie, obsessed with that sweater." Link, 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 link the sweater, Jax. Okay. Turdy, where's the sweater from? I will be shocked if anyone says that in earnest. I wore it on the toast and I got so many messages. So really? many. Yeah. Really? Just hurtful. Like, my God. Schlepped all these cardigans here just to be yelled at no, and made fun of. I'm not upset with you. I don't want to give a shit situation. if you were. I'm upset with my situation. Whatever. And, like, you get to look so great. Well, I bought a new outfit and I'm excited about it. Well, I bought a new outfit, too. And literally, we had the exact same morning because I put on my boy set lie, too. Boy set lie? Boy Sly set. They had a big sale last week. And I just looked like a fucking blimp. But you're so. our blimp. <laughs> so I couldn't walk out of the house like that. Jackie, what happened to no negative self-talk? What happened to reality? <sighs> Such a good rebuttal. What about reality? But in reality, you actually look great today, so stop. Okay, thanks. Like, I like the sweater. Your hair looks great. You've got, you know, a nice flush to your skin. Leave it alone. Thank you. Leave it alone. Okay. I just wanted to say, like, if you're looking at me being like, what the fuck is she wearing that's so not her? I just want to say, like, it's trying times. And I've been ordering so many maternity clothes and, and doing well. But some things, like, I got a lot of athleisure, not right for the no. toast. Some things that would show leg, not right for the toes. Here's the thing. It's like, you can order as many clothes as you want. They'll last you a week. Like, new yeah. clothes mm-hmm. are, like, fleeting. It's yeah. like, there's so many days in the week. Yeah. And if anybody ever actually, like, went through the last couple of months of like what I wear on the toast they would see like six items I literally wear the same six things but like I shake them up every week yeah what do people and do so like I I need to get to that place I, right now I have like three good things okay we'll keep building when I have a new sweater you're welcome now I have this gorgeous new and sweater. I also gifted Jackie the period sweater that I always wear that Which she loves I hate and I figured it was time you know not for the passing only, of the torch not only did I only want cardigans like I don't want something to put over my head that's just like blimp season uh it's horizontal stripes. Oof. It's a beautiful sweater with meaning in history. And it's ugly colors. It has meaning. That have no place in May. It has, it has meaning. It has history. And it's got family. It's a family heirloom at this point. I just think you're trying to sabotage me. Like you show up looking like that and then you bring me this sweater. It's like day two of just like kind of starting the show. With attacking. Tension. No, not tension, because it's not coming from me. Tension requires two sort no, of tense parties. This is just an attack, attack, attack. Your aggressive act <gasps> came in the form of this sweater. <laughs> okay. Okay. Should I, I put my button down back on that I wore over here? You look great. Stop. Okay. What if Harry heard his mom talking like this about herself, the woman he loves? He would say, yeah, mom, it's sort of smugly. <laughs> I'm really I'm being I'm becoming hurt I'm becoming hurt why you didn't make you didn't crochet it I might as well have and how do you know that I didn't you didn't even ask where it's from it's Zara I can read the label you didn't even ask I didn't ask I need to ask even though I could see it I crocheted that sweater with my to my fingers bled it's made with so much love is that what the hearts are for (laughs) I will not participate in this mock, in this charade, well, mocking me. No, no, I'm not sorry. Thank you. You should be. No, no, no. I'm fine. The wrong salutation. I'll Thank take you. And I, I'll take the sorry. I know it was an instinct, but I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. A reflex. We've got a great show today. What about you? Anything to say in my direction? Oh, yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got a great show today. Lots to discuss. Girly swirlies just being girlies. And swirlies. And turdies. 
and shirties. 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 Um, so yeah, that's like what's up with me. Oh, I started Andy Cohen's book last night. And? I'm about halfway through. His books are just like so easy to read. It's basically a diary where he diaries his life every day. I, I find it really interesting. But I also was thinking like there's so much about his book that's like very in the know in terms of like Bravo, in terms of New York, and just in terms of like entertainment industry that I feel like if you're not really into either of those things, like why would you pick up the book? But like it might be confusing, you know? Like what? Well, first of all, he refers to like every Bravo celebrity just by their first name. And it's like, well. Like what you. He, every day he documents the book and then he's like finish the show watch up and I have weed Craig and Paige it's like well what if you don't watch Summer House you know what I mean like, yeah it's a little in the know and then he's also just talking about like there was also some interesting things he was saying how he had a meeting with Casey and Danielle from the bitch sesh podcast and they pitched him an idea to like package their old podcast episodes for Radio Andy content so it's just like interesting like business stuff but like does everyone care about that you know that's interesting to me but yeah I don't know that that's interesting to everyone what happened with it never followed up I don't think it ended up panning out interesting yeah but he is really close with Casey and Danielle he had dinner with them like one of the nights he goes out to dinner every he puts the kids down and goes to dinner. I'm like, how much energy do you have? I guess he does work at night too. So like having dinner before is like not what a big deal. What time does he wake up? Oh, uh, literally you, you get it. You would actually find the book interesting. It's really like a working dad. Cause he like documents every day when the kids wake up. It's like sometimes it's 4.30 and most of the time it's like 6.45. Yeah. Um, but I, that's what another takeaway from my book. The man doesn't sleep. But he does nap every day when the kids are napping. Oh, that's nice. And also as you get older, you just require less sleep. Yeah. But he works mornings, Radio Andy and nights watch what happens. watch happens live but successful people just don't sleep like that's kind of a prerequisite to being successful so like, true you're not getting your standard nine hours and that's why I feel like I'm definitely limited in my success like yeah. I like I think I'm, I'm probably close to like hitting my peak because like you bet your ass I'm sleeping nine hours a night yeah I slept nine hours last night I woke up like I was hit by a truck like it wasn't enough time no I slept not enough hours last night I woke up at 4 30 maybe that means you're like in your successful era Totally, except it's not like I like did something productive towards my career this morning. You reared your child. But I did rear my child. That's productive towards everything. That's true, towards yeah. having it all. Uh, well, I think Andy Cohen is like really as close as it comes to having it all. So the book starts where he's like about to have the second kid. Okay. So you see him like life as, as a dad of one and then a dad of two. And what I really like about the book is like the, he wakes up with a pit every day about something he said either on the radio and something he said. The book starts after New Year's Eve. And it was right after he called Ryan Seacrest a loser uh -huh. and went on the Bill de Blasio rant. And it was like the Bill de Blasio thing, like he became a New York hero. Like people on the street were like pounding him. And then with the Ryan Seacrest thing, he had like such a pit because Kelly Ripa is like such a good friend of his. And this was Ka Kelly and Ryan. And he didn't realize he called Ryan Seacrest a loser. He just meant the people that work at ABC are losers. Got it. And he so, was just saying that like coming from like NBC supremacy. No, he was on CNN, but like, yeah. But just like rival network. Yeah, team. yeah. And he was drunk. Like, and it was, like, he's like, who cares? Like people leave this show on for five hours. Like nobody actually watches, but it's five hours of like me saying stuff. Right. So I actually really resonated with like literally every day it's a pit. And every day he says something, it gets picked up. Yeah. And he also, he was, so it's actually really interesting where we are in the book. A lot of interesting things, hap things are happening that he's trying to navigate. Like Jenny from Salt Lake City, her old Facebook posts resurfacing. Mary and her crazy shit and then not showing up to the reunion so he basically just like all he like he doesn't really have an opinion on anything he just doesn't want to get like dragged into people's shit yeah so he was like he like I think what he said was like you know we're doing our best at vetting, vetting people and like then that got picked up and he just like can't win um but also what's interesting about Andy is he literally never leaves the West Village and when he does he can never get a cab home like he can never find a cab he pretty much like once a week takes a ride from a fan why doesn't he have uber he does, but like I guess he's he's always in Midtown by like Sirius XM where there's like so much traffic, yeah. or the West Village where there's so much traffic. He can never. He's just always like waiting out <laughs> for a ride, and like someone will always pull over and be like, "Oh, my wife is a fan." Like a truck driver was like, "Oh my god, my wife." So we Facetime the wife from the truck, and literally took a ride downtown from this truck driver. That's really sweet, but like, why the, not have a car? Yeah, and I mean, he's rich. Like he could have a car and driver totally. Um, but he said like someday, like one day, like no, like no Uber would pick him up and there was like no fan in sight that he was like actually like modeling his face in the street. Like so everyone could see him on display, like hoping that someone would pick it up. It's a really funny book. It does get a little repetitive because it's just like every day. Like here's what I did with the kids, watch what happens live. And then every couple of days there's something crazy that happens. But like it's for sometimes, but I find myself Googling so much because he was basically saying it was tough because he was preparing for his daughter to be born. So he 
taped like a week of shows in one day. So it's 10 guests. You have to guess who it was. I literally went to Google. I was like, who was a guest on the week of April 6th? And there was like 10 people. He said there was somebody so rude to the staff. Like he never saw anything like it. And then on the show was like a delight. And now they're banned from Watch What Happens Live. Do you, who are the names from that week? Um, it was confusing because like the names that he had cited, who he said it wasn't them, but like we filmed with this person, weren't on the schedule. It was, he made it impossible for someone to figure out. Hmm. Yeah. But there's like a lot of, there's a lot of good tea and I haven't gone to the Meghan Markle thing yet. Right. So I'm assuming there's more tea to be had. Okay. You're making a good case for it. I yeah. might read it. Oh, you would like it. Just like a lot of like the balancing, like, and he's like, I refuse to be like an involved, a non-involved parent. Like, yeah. and he's totally transparent. Like he has help. He has a baby nurse and he just has like a nanny for the kids. Um, but he's really like as, as involved as, as he could be at his level of success. Right. And it's really sweet. That's nice. Okay. I'm feeling influenced. Yeah, it's good. No, but it's just so light and so easy. Like after reading this book for my book club, that was really like genuinely fucking horrible. The things we left in which we unfinished, um, which took me quite literally two weeks to finish this book. After last night, I'm ready like 45% in. It's just like light and easy and, and fun and fresh. Nice. Speaking of books, I read and finished the Sally Hepworth book, the new one, The Soulmate. That we I'm going to choose for my book club. We love Sally Hepworth here. We do. And I loved The Soulmate. I really did not know like what was going to be and it pulls you in really quickly and I really enjoyed my time with it like just as much as every other book maybe even more than some others. I would have to like think about them in order to rank yeah. them but they're all good. The thing is you pick up a Sally Hepworth book she's like an Ellen, Ellen Hilda Brand now like it's yes, gonna be good. It's gonna be good. And that's such a relief like yeah no it was it was really good so so I'm choosing it. You recommend you yeah okay. Because, like, the book club's going through a drought. Like, we thought this book was going to save us. Book clubs, that's part of book club. Like, unless you're following, um, or unless it's something that someone in the club has already read. But that and ruins then, it. And then they recommend it to the group. Like, if you guys are going in blind, like, part of book club is flopping. I, I mean, the redheads, no, we know all about that. I know. And what's really tough is that, like, everyone in our book club is, like, a really active reader. They read, like, a couple books a month. So we can't choose anything, like, obvious that's charting on Goodreads because somebody same, has already read it. Same with the redheads. It's, it's just so, so hard. hard to be us. We make this life look easy, Jax. But it's not. It's no. not easy to be a part of a thriving book club. No, it's really not. But did I tell you we came up with a name for our book club? The Yellow Bellies? No. Mm -mm. The Balabusta Book Club. Oh, that's good. Because like everyone, mostly everyone in it is like a wife. Actually, everyone in it is like a, a domesticated queen. And ever, and when we meet up, everyone like cooks and like sets the table and makes it like a real dinner party. And Balabusta is what, Yiddish? Yeah. For like, you know, a nice homemaking queen. Yeah. So we're the Balabusta book club. I like that. Oh, and everyone in it is Jewish, so they knew what Balabusta meant. I like that a lot. Mm. Because I, I like, like it. it. I forget. I gave you one other suggestion. For well, it was like booked and busy or something or like that. Cooked and booked because we're always cooking or oh, something. Oh, that's good. No, I didn't give you that. Yeah, but then it sounds like we're like making drugs. <laughs> True. No, I like Balabuster Book Club. Speaking of drugs, this morning while I was Balabusta. getting... Balabusta. I think it's Balabusta, not Buster. I didn't say Buster. <laughs> Balabusta. No. Balabusta. Um, speaking of drugs, when I was getting ready this morning, I watched a new episode of Good Guys. Um, and it was so good. I saw what you posted and I found it a little hurtful. I know. Well, obviously. I heard, found it hurtful towards the toast. I found it hurtful towards the redheads. Well, I said that Good Guys is literally the best podcast out there. But I was just trying to like hype them up. I obviously didn't mean like, you know, it's number <laughs> one in the world. Like it was obviously just a euphemism. I figured you of all people could read through my euphemisms. Yeah. I don't know. You said it so emphatically and you don't really like give away. Well, I was just like cackling. No, it's I'm, really so I'm funny. Kidding. You're allowed to. You're allowed to. I'm allowed to like something? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, and they just did like a whole top, like section at the beginning talking about drugs. Um, like experimenting with drugs and like the first time they've ever tried. And Josh obviously like ended up becoming a drug addict. But they kept it really like light and funny. And Josh was saying like how he tried MDMA for the first time. And he was like, guess where I was? And Ben was like, a rave. He was like, I was in my apartment completely alone. What? Yeah. Was that like while he was a drug addict? Or I think it was on the way. On the way. Well, it was actually on really interesting. Way. What he said was like, I didn't think I was a drug addict because I would take drugs and like feel like myself. Like I had no insecurities and I was like alive. So he's like, it never occurred to me that I was literally becoming an addict. I just thought I was becoming myself. Um, it was really interesting. That is interesting. That's what you get on the good guys. Like hilarity, but realness. Introspection. Introspection. And Josh is like, you know, just like a dad and like really has lived. Yeah. And so, and, and Ben is in the process of living. 
So they really offer a very unique perspective. And so does Josh give Ben advice? Yeah, well, Ben was telling the story on the podcast of like one of the only times he's ever done Molly. And the first time he did it, he was at like a rave when he was in college at, he was visiting a friend at the University of Albany. Ben said this? Yeah. Okay. And somebody gave him Molly and he was like, you know what? Sure. And literally 10 minutes later, uh, it was like 12 o'clock. So he was like, perfect timing. 10 minutes later, the lights turned on and the party was over. Oof. And he had to walk home on Molly. Ooh. Yeah. That's why you shouldn't do drugs. Yeah, because you just never know when the party's going to be over. You never know when you they're going to turn the lights it. on. Yeah. You can't time it. No, you really shouldn't do drugs. No, definitely not. They're so unsafe. They're literally illegal. <laughs> well, that too. But you just never, you don't know what you're getting. So true. It's just all mixed up. In these dark economic times, like people will do anything for a buck. Yeah, no, it's all crap out there. So just be safe, you guys. That's the lesson of today's episode. Yeah. <sighs> what else? Not much else. We it's got my second s- coffee today. Mine as well. I'm not well. I'm not well either because I woke up early. Why aren't you well? You got nine hours. Because I'm like a disgusting slob who doesn't take care of herself. And all she does is like sleep and wonder why she's tired. Got it. Also, stay tuned for tomorrow's episode because tonight is the night I'm like really hoping to run into Taylor Swift. Like Taylor was out and about last night. We're going to talk about it. She's in New York. I'm going out to like a hot spot tonight. And I just, I feel it. I feel like she's going to be there. Okay. Manifest it. No, just like, please. I've like so many of my friends in the last few weeks have like been at the place that Taylor was at and they text like, oh my God, she's here. Yeah. Like it's happened like two or three times. When is it my turn? I just feel like she might like stay in tonight with Maddie. No. It's Tuesday. But it is gorgeous weather. It's gorgeous weather. She's, you know, in her paparazzi era. She's going to hit the town and the town's going to hit back. And so is Dirty. Okay. And are you going to be ready? Yeah. You're not going to flub? Oh, I mean, I might be like, I might like, like stop learning, like stop knowing how to speak English, but I'm going in just like feeling confident. Okay. Do you know what you're wearing? No. You should wear the sweater. Should I wear merch? You should wear the sweater. I think I'll wear toast merch, so it's like, maybe like, she's seen it. She's like, oh, you're the toast girl? There's no way on God's green diddly dally. I don't know. Do you think? Jackie, the the toast is literally the number one podcast in the world. It is, but I feel like she doesn't listen to podcasts. She literally just said that she doesn't even read articles about herself. Like, Yeah, but it's possible like somebody in her group does and was like, by the way, Tay, like, listen to this. These girls were talking about you and like, it was so funny. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, I don't think she sits down at her computer every day and listens, but like, Maybe she's been sent one of our clips. I don't know. I feel so far removed from her world. I know. Like there are other celebrities where it's like I can, there's a degree of separation. Like, yeah, no, it's possible that they've like seen it. But I just feel like not She's for her. so like out of our. Out of reach. Yeah, that's what it but was. But for everyone too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say out of touch. Like and- I can't think of any podcast that I think like Taylor dabbles in. Maybe so, like a true crime. Yeah. Like totally apolitical in the sense of like pop culture yes not pop culture not politics not sports like seriously true crime not entertainment true crime not society and culture i feel like she probably listened to a true crime podcast and then wrote he i did, did it, it but it just can't prove it that's my skip on evermore uh, that's a, f- a very fair assessment and if we keep talking like this she'll never listen so true but so, we've said such nice things i mean I would lay my life out on the line for the girl. Like, the least she could do is listen to my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, should we dive in? Yeah, let's dive in so we can talk about Taylor more. Wow, it's already been 20 minutes. Like, what have we spoken about in the t- last 20 minutes? Well, we had that fight at the top. Oh, right. That was like We're four, so toxic. four or five minutes. Then the book talk. Book talk. I guess I did go on like a little long about Andy's book. You did. Yeah, that's what we've been talking about. Oh, but like exciting development in my life. Like, I posted about Andy's book and he responded. Thanks. Oh, cool. Yeah. This is exciting. Yeah. Now I have like open DMs. I'm sure he moved me to general, but like still. Yeah. That's exciting. Happy for you. Without further ado, here are the Fast Five stories that you need to know. And today's episode is brought to you by Bowl and Branch. Wake up feeling rested and refreshed with the softest, most luxurious sheets from Bowl and Branch. Bowl and Branch is the expert in bedding. They make the highest quality sheets with incredible craftsmanship. Each sheet set is slow made for an unmatched softness with 100% traceable organic cotton that gets softer with every wash. Now, I have a lot of friends who listen to this podcast and like after months and months and years and years of talking about Bowl and Branch, they finally are like, hey, what's the code? I'm going to listen to you finally. And the way I've seen such a difference in their character, Mm. they're so much kinder because they're well rested. And they said, Turdy, I should have listened to you a long time ago. Ain't that the truth? So Jackie and I 
love Bolin brand sheets. We love all of their bedding accoutrement. We have lots of different accessories like throw blankets from them, but really their sheet sets are what make the world go round. So we both have the signature hem sheet collection from Bolin Branch. It's their best seller. They're loved by millions of sleepers. They're buttery to the touch. They're really breathable, but they'll also keep you warm. So they're perfect for year round sleeping and they're made with the highest quality, 100% organic cotton threads on earth. They come in 10 versatile colors and all sizes. So that's twin up to California King. They're made without toxic free from synthetic pesticides, formaldehyde, and other harsh chemicals. Best of all, they're giving you a 30-night risk-free guarantee with free shipping and returns on all U.S. orders. So sleep better at night with the Bowl & Branch sheet sets. Get 15% off your first order when you use promo code TOAST at bowlandbranch.com. That's Bowl & Branch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, Branch, Dot com promo code toast exclusions apply see site for details today's episode is also brought to you by squarespace you need a website you're starting a little side hustle a blog an e-commerce business check out squarespace.com slash toast for a free trial and when you're ready to launch use offer code toast to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or a domain so there are many different reasons why you might be revamping your website creating a website whether that's e-commerce you want to sell products you want to do blogging Squarespace has everything you need to get your website up and running, but you don't need like a degree in software engineering to figure it out. It is so easy. You'll look like you have a professional grade website and it really works. And it was easy as pie. So here are some of the features that are great, if, especially if you're in e-commerce. Squarespace is a space to sell anything. They have the tools that you need to get your business off the ground, including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. Whatever you sell, Squarespace has merchandising features to make your products look their best online. You can connect your social media accounts. You can get a traffic overview, which is basically seeing how your visits, unique visitors, page views are trending over time. And the content ownership. So you own all of the content that you put on the Squarespace platform. They just offer a one-click data portability so it's really easy to do. You can do email campaigns. You can collect donations. You can share on social media. They have great tools for blogging. So whatever the reason is for starting a website, check out squarespace.com slash toast for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code toast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you, Claudia. You're welcome, Jackie. Our first story, Taylor Swift and Maddie Healy leave a New York City recording studio together amid dating rumors. Another one, like they're dating. Yeah, this one I, I, I still will you're allow rumors. What? Just because like, no, I guess you're right, you're right, you're right, sorry. Tailored and the 1975 front. Taylor, yeah, was there? Tailored. And the front man were spotted leaving Electric Lady Recording Studio together in NYC Monday night amid the rumors that they're dating. She kept her look casual in an oversized NYU sweatshirt and skirt while Maddie looked dapper in all black ensemble. So they're leaving this recording studio. So you think, oh, are they recording together? That was my initial thought as well. But then other celebs were at that studio that night. I think there was a party. Yeah, I think Taylor threw the party. You think she threw the party? That's what I had read. That's what I had read. It was like Taylor's party. Kendrick Lamar was there. Uh, Florence, Florence of and the Machine. Uh, no Machine, just Florence. Just Florence. She left the Machine at home. Um, so it was like a. So they definitely weren't recording. Right, because the Machine wasn't there. Unless it's a, a quad. But there a was quartet. other people. There was like a bunch of other people there too. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, when I first saw it, I was like, oh my god, not this whole thing being like a lead up for a song. But no, it was a party. They left together in the same car, and there were two takeaways for me from this very very brief, you know, video of them walking out of the the studio to their car. It was literally three seconds. The first was fans were quick to point out on Twitter, which I appreciated that all the foundation on Taylor Swift's nose had run off, had rubbed off, like almost like she had been making out. And like, you know, when you like bump noses with someone, like she has no foundation left on her nose. Or, yeah, probably, or. She has a runny nose. It's allergy season. Mm, Shit. The pollen this year is really on point. Yesterday was like peak pollen for me. Okay, that's shit. Okay. 50-50. Yeah, but I also feel like hear me out this is like something taylor strecker and i were talking about like stealth wealth um i feel like allergies is like a problem that rich people like don't have because like they go from their like perfectly ventilated cars she walked three seconds on the street into like her perfectly ventilated studio you know yes but the pollen comes for everyone i know i know but do you feel like they also have like special drugs because taylor Taylor can't be having like a post nasal drip when she's on tour i thought you were gonna say special drugs not because they could spend all their time inside and in cars like other people could do that too if uh, if they wanted to if they wanted to and, and the allergies were really bothering them like don't leave your house but because they might have special drugs yeah because Taylor really can't be dealing with like a runny nose post nasal drip when she's trying to sing that like affects your voice yeah so she probably has that then my other takeaway but I do think it was the making out 
the reason why all the makeup on her nose had rubbed off. Probably. That's like so like remember that picture of like Kylie and Jaden Smith leaving the movie theater when they were 11 years old and, and she had no foundation left and he had foundation on his like mouth, nose and lips. Yeah. That's what it reminds me of. And then my second takeaway, it's like just so funny how like, you know, people become better looking when you see them through a different lens. Like I don't really find Maddie Healy like to be all that cute. This is not my type, but I don't know, like seeing him walk out with Taylor, like I was like, oh, he's hot. Like I see it now, you know? Yeah. I don't, I still, not for me, but like for her. They're but a nice looking couple. There's also something about the Y on the end of his name that like makes him cute. Do you agree? In the Maddie or the Healy? Oh, such a good question. <laughs> Maddie, like. No, I said it's... the opposite the other oh, day. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I grew up watching Awkward. Do you remember that show? Yeah. And the way I was absolutely in love with Maddie, like, oh my God, I would have taken a bullet for him. And like, I just wanted him and Jenna, even though Jenna was worst, to be together. And he was like, you know, every high school fantasy. The fact that his name was Maddie, like made him even cuter. Cause he was like, hop, like Maddie's like a cute name. But this guy's 34. No, I like, um, uh, because I like it. Like, is he a grandpa and they're going to call him Maddie? That's like adorable. That I'm is obsessed. cute. Fine. Like not a grandpa yet, but like an old. You know, there's person. definitely gonna be like a weird transition between now and grandpahood <laughs> where it might not fit. Yeah. But I like it. Because you like it. Yeah. That's all you have to say. Yeah. So he's like, he's becoming cuter to me. Like that's what Taylor's doing. I don't need him to become cuter for me. Like I'm really happy for her selection, but I, this doesn't now need to mean that I need to become like a fan of his and listen to his music and like get it. But we were listening to the 1975 before we started filming today. What did we you do, think? We did. It made it into the pre-show playlist. What did you think? It sounded like exactly what I thought it would sound like. It sounded exactly as how I just sang it for you? And just based on like what, there was a moment a few months ago like a literal week where everyone's obsessed with the 1975. Yeah, because there had been a clip of him that went viral singing the bridge of, so I got it, found it, just gotta keep it, don't fuck it, you up it. That's why. Whatever reason. And some of those clips made their way to, to reels. To reels, I guess. And you had spoken about him. Mm -hmm. So I was familiar. And so it all is in line with what I thought about him. Got it. I just thought he was looking cute last night. That's all I was trying to say. I'm happy that you think that. Yeah. Because she's your girl. So maybe and she, I, Taylor should watch her back if I run into her tonight. Oh, plot twist. No, I'm happy that you are, hap like, you endorse this choice for her. I don't know why I just feel like Maddie Healy, like, pre-Taylor, like, is a very antisocial person. I feel like he's probably, like, really tired from, like, going to all these parties I and mean, stuff. do you see his face in all these pictures? He looks tired. He's, it looks like a little kid, like, being paparazzi, like, no, yeah. stop the flash. Maybe he has a toxic relationship with the paparazzi. Yeah, no, I think he's trying to be annoying. Yeah. It was a two second walk. Yeah. But every single picture is like, wear sunglasses. Yeah. Taylor kept a casual and NYU crew neck. I love her outfit. I do too. It just doesn't give me I threw a party outfit. No, it doesn't. It doesn't give hostess vibes. I don't think it was a party and I don't think she threw it. Well, okay. But what's been reported is that it is a party and she threw it. I'm questioning everything. As you should. As you should. I, I, I think it was something else, industry things that we'll never understand. Oh, that's another thing from Andy's book. He was like, I did a red carpet and I saw like that wench from page six who's like always misconstruing what I say. And then he was like, see uh, the music man opening. So whatever, I like Googled. I tried to find who his like arch nemesis is at page six, but I couldn't find what he was talking about. So many things like I went to Google from his book and I was left at a dead end. Hmm. But he has like a nemesis who works there and I really want to know who it is. I'm sure if we just read stories about him, we could figure it out. I wonder if it's the same as my nemesis. Or mine. Um, or should I say, nemeses. We have different nemeses. We do have different nemeses at page six. I won't say her name because the last time I did, she like literally crapped her pants. <laughs> she like sent me a nasty fucking email. She was like going to write this article. So I just like posted the email on my Instagram. That's what you do. Like power move being like, this wench wants to know my thoughts. Here are my thoughts. Yeah. And she was like, oh, she literally like crapped her pants that I put her name. Like you literally work in media. Calm down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think that's just like a lesson to all journalists. Like, don't come for me. I'll snap your neck. Yeah. Are you ready for our next story? Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll tell you later. Oh, okay. Kim Kardashian is shopping for a home in Tom Brady's community. Page six is saying that the pair are, quote, friendly. Yeah. I don't know why everyone, like, started crapping their pants. Like, these two are so not There's dating. a lot of pants crapping happening yeah. right now. Um, Today's episode is sponsored by Cottonelle. Literally. I agree they're not dating. Yeah. It's so obvious. The like, story is that Kim and Tom have, sh that's not even a couple name, Kim and Tom. What are they going to be called? Com. Com. Tim. Wait. Kim, wait, wait, Tim and Kim? 
Wait, Tom. Tom. Oh, sorry. I'm telling you. Yeah, it doesn't it's all work. right. No. It doesn't roll off the tip of the tongue. They've struck a friendship up as she looks to buy a vacation home in his exclusive Bahamian neighborhood. They make it seem like these two are dating and she's buying a house down the street from him because she's so obsessed with him. Meanwhile, like, she's just trying to look for a vacation house and he happens one to the, vacation there, too. And he has, like, a rich community that he knows about. Yeah. So she called, like, they said that she called him up to ask him for his advice on the community. Yeah, Kim likes that, that Bahamas place. When she stopped, remember when she was paparazzi for the first time with Pete Davidson wearing jeans in the Bahamas and then yeah. getting off that little seaplane? Yeah. She was also going to that community in the Bahamas. Yeah, she's there all the time. Also the other, um, I think like Kendall's there all the time yeah. too. Like it's just a fun place for celebrities to go. And I guess at a certain point it makes sense to get a house there if you're going all the time. Yeah. So that's what she's doing. She's not dating Tom Brady. I didn't think for a second that she was. like, And if they were, like that would actually be like a letdown. I don't think that's good, like a good next step for either of them. No, it's like... Please, if they were actually dating, like, you know, I'd be so here for it. But it's at one. It's too good to be true. It's too obvious it's not happening. No, it's not. Not. It's not happening. No. And I had read that Tom Brady, like, had a girlfriend, like, a model or something. But that was a while ago. That was a while ago. It's hard to keep up with these singles. Yeah. I never thought that they were dating, so this didn't get my hopes up or down. No, but people are have been very quick to be like, run, don't. Run, don't what? Run, don't beat it with him, with her. Like, Why? The fans aren't here for it. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Why? What's the fans' I reasoning? I mean, I could find out. I just, like, didn't give it the toxic clicks. No, you shouldn't give I it the toxic clicks. I didn't give the toxicity qu clicks. Like, a couple losers posted up some tweets. That's an article. You know what I mean? No, it's so interesting, like, what makes news these days. Like, somebody, like, there's a couple people in your Instagram comments all upset. Fan slam Kim Kardashian. Fan slam. Literally, that's what it, fan, this is the headline. Fans rip Kim Kardashian and Tom Brady friendship. Quote, run, Tom. Why? And it was, they flooded Page Six's Instagram comments. So they're reporting on their own comment section where random fucking people wrote, run, Tom, run, and he needs to steer clear of her. That's not news. No, it ain't. Who cares what some smelly Joe in Idaho thinks? A third comment was even more succinct with a one-word comment, quote, gross. <laughs> I can't believe like, that gets written up. Yeah. However, not everyone was quite so negative. One person argued, now that would be an interesting relationship. Oh, so the point of this is article... Is that an argument? So the point of this article is to say, people have conflicting opinions. No, yeah, but instead they're ripping. Slamming. Another person said, I would love to see this happen. Why do I care? No, it's really a pointless article. That's why you just got to read headlines these days. Like, yeah, no, that's why, that's why I didn't click it then. I'm glad I didn't, but I'm glad we clicked it now and got to the bottom of things. It's just so important to be like an astute... consumer of pop culture like mm -hmm. there's so much fraudulence out there i feel like i have a really good bar now like for what i believe what i don't believe like what what headlines i could literally skip past knowing they're not true yeah but you got to be very on alert yeah you've got to get dressed and stay on alert <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is exactly what i'm doing tonight and if you listen to all episodes of the toast you would understand that reference sense. But if you skip some days, you're lost. I wonder why, like, someone might skip a day of the toast. As a toaster on my free time, like, sometimes you just don't have It depends the time. on your day. And it's like, you could work on catching up, but you might, it might take too long. Like, it just depends on your schedule. Yeah, I think that's also why, like, you know, our numbers do dip a little bit in the summer. Like, people actually have shit to do. Yeah, I respect no, that. And I think, like, they're on vacation. You don't need to listen to a podcast all the time. Like, when you're commuting, you need it. Yeah, of so course. It just... The monotony of life, like... It makes sense to me. Yeah. Are you ready for our next story? Yeah, wow, we're, like, zooming through today now. Are we? I guess not. I don't know. I guess time flies when you're having a great time with your sister. Time flies when you're wearing a beautiful cardigan. You would know. I wouldn't. I'm not wearing a cardigan, so you would know. Would it? Okay, moving on. Miss... Moving on. You know, for girls talking about moving on, you're certainly not. You're just so attached to this cardigan, I don't think I should take it. Okay. Okay. And now I've worn it once. Right, right, like, right. Cool. No, honestly, like, once something leaves my house, it's your problem now. I'm not bringing it back. It feels like a studio problem. Honestly, we should get it framed and hang it up. Literally. The cardigan that launched a thousand ships. Yeah. Sound off in the comments. Do you like the cardigan? Team cardigan, team nardigan. Love that. <laughs> no. 
Our next story is crazy news because Vanderpump Rules dropped a clip from the new episode. Oh my god, I missed it. That airs tomorrow night. Uh, the way like my whole week has been leading up, like I, I know I w- I literally was going to go out to dinner one day, but then I was like, then I won't be able to watch Vanderpump Rules on time. No, and um, because I've been like traveling so much these last few weeks, we haven't done a recap, mm-hmm. so like. W- Thursday's episode, like you guys ain't fucking ready but for the you're recap. Caught up in your personal life, right? Like, no, I actually have one more. I'm I'm gonna watch. I I haven't watched last week's episode, but I want to watch it back to back tomorrow. Okay, like I'm I want to sit up. down at eight, watch from eight to nine the old episode, nine to ten the new episode, ten to ten thirty watch Robin's live, and Ariana's on Watch Robin's live, mm-hmm. and then toast toast so it's all fresh in my mind okay well they dropped a clip you know they're one minute uh so clips. smart not a, even a trailer like here's a minute of the show where ariana sits down with katie and sheena and explains like what she learned when and how she, she learned, learned it. it so she said that raquel had sex with sandoval in her car while ariana was reeling from her dog's death Jesus. So People has the exclusive clip where Ariana reveals to friends Katie and Sheena how she found out about Tom cheating on her. She said, quote, I went to Tom with I went with Tom to Tom Tom because he had that party thing. I found a screen recording of them on FaceTime. It was literally from the night before he was at Tom Schwartz's. Katie was like he was at she was doing that at Schwartz's from there Ariana explains that she confronted Raquel directly to get answers she said I called Raquel and I started like making her like fucking tell me what the fuck when did this start she said right after the girls trip I'm like you mean oh. right after Charlotte died because she left the girls yeah, trip yeah, 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 yeah. Died. a flashback then shows uh Ariana leaving the girls trip back in her conversation with Katie and Sheena Ariana explains what Raquel told her she said they kissed well, later that night when we were out here, I pressed Tom and he said, well, they actually fucked in her car that night and he didn't have a key to get in. So he had to ring the doorbell and I had to let him in. Oh my God. I mean, like this is really the moment we've been waiting for. And honestly, I would we'll say Bravo like did not do a bad job. Like no. they didn't drag anything out no. and we really are getting everything. Like everyone's like fully bleeding out for this. So I'm very grateful. Um, but I still, even with this, like the timeline is so confusing to me. Um, it's so confusing. Cause I think, and I mean, Schwartz said this on his disastrous watch what happens live appearance, but it made a little bit of sense that like their affair wasn't linear. It's not like they like had an emotional affair right. and then they kissed and then they like fought their feelings and then they, had sex and then they you know it didn't like progress like like a normal relationship I think from what I understand like they had sex over the summer like kind of out of nowhere and I don't think then from there they started a full-blown affair like I think they were on ice for a little bit and then more so in the fall did they like get into it got it that's what I think okay so not linear no not linear that does make sense I just can't and you know what's so crazy is like I guess Tom had already had all of these Tom and the most extra performances scheduled. It's a travesty. And he had already had all these like shows booked and tickets sold. And you know how much money he spends like paying these people to hang out with him a thousand dollars a day. So um, he like has to still do these shows even though he's become like the most hated man in America and the footage I have seen. It's tragic. And if I didn't hate him so much, I would feel sorry for him. By the way, I was going to say it's to the, they're so pathetic that I actually like watch them and I actually feel like a semblance of sadness for him. Like that's how bad they are. But I want to know, you know, before this happened, like there were people buying tickets to this show. No, and those people need to be held accountable. That's, you know, I want to talk about that. Yeah. People yeah. who actually like liked Tom Sandoval enough to buy tickets and want to see him cover songs that he didn't write with arguably like one of the worst voices I've ever heard in my life. Like there were people who were looking forward to that and I hate to yuck someone's yums but I want to know I want to get into the mind of that person no I I totally agree they need to speak for themselves to me that's more interesting it is really interesting watching him be on tour right now is so painful to watch and a part of me is like how is he just going out there every night like how how do you not cancel the shows but like he it's income. No, you know? it's income. And, and also it's our soul. Like you have to understand we're not dealing with like a normal functioning right, human right. being. We're dealing with like a unbelievable narcissist, like with actual like problems. <laughs> like it's not shocking to me that he's going out there and like giving the same energy. Like he doesn't look even remotely ashamed, which is even more no, shameful. And what's worse this week, he like changed up the lyrics. Stacy, can't you see Raquel's not the girl for no, me. Schwartz, can you see? Whatever. Because he changes Schwartz's it mom. to Schwartz's mom. Like, pe- and so by the way, before like Scandal, to- people would go to the show and be like, Schwartz's mom. And right. he would hold up a picture of Schwartz's mom. There were people who were eating that up. And I think that's like a really big conversation worth 
worth having. Like, who? I agree. I totally <laughs> agree. Show yourselves. Show yourselves. And unburden yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if anything, now I think tickets are more interesting. <laughs> like, I would buy a ticket now before I bought it's a ticket like then. It's like a comedy and a tragedy. It's a Shakespearean... <laughs> experience she experienced like it's it's otherworldly no, i can't even explain it's it it's out of body it's like you know what it feels wrong to witness it's like a car wreck i yes the more we talk about it like i kind of want to go <laughs> just so i can like experience like i but like what do you think about the people who are going and like holding signs and like heckling him <laughs> that's mean like, actually. Like, it's just, a, like, unnecessary. It's nicer to not go. And it's a bad use of your time. Yeah. Like, I would only go just, I need to witness it. Yeah, no, I will be I a silent like, observer. I wouldn't bring a sign or heckle or anything. No, I, just, I would just, like, like politely clap. Yeah, like, it like, would only just be to, like, see the environment. But if you're going to a show that you spent money on to, like, hold a sign that he's a worm or whatever, like, I, I, there are more fun ways to spend your oh, time. Oh, and we also didn't talk about how we got a trailer for the reunion last week yeah it was everyone was you know taking away poo poo head which was moronic but when he called him a worm with a mustache that was funny um and there's a few different setups because obviously raquel and china can't be in the same room uh -huh. which is kind of annoying because it looks like we spent a lot of time with sheena yeah like sheena's just gonna have to take a back seat and then i then andy had said there is like a one-on-one -on -one with tom and ariana tom ariana and raquel Raquel and Tom. Do they talk about anything else that happened this season? I don't know. I hope not. Like I know. Actually, I would like a, a special time carved out for Satchel. <laughs> Agreed. You, Katie was on Much Happens Live last week, and she said her and Satchel are not together, but he's doing very well. That's all you will, could ask for. I just hope for, you know, a happy Satch. Happy Satch greater than Hello, unhappy, unhappy Satch. Satch. One, the other thing I was going to say about Tom's show is, like, the fact that he's trying to, like, get in on the moment of Scandival by, like, changing the lyrics and, like, throwing Raquel under the bus... But all, but also like admitting like, oh, she's my girl, and but, but I love also like his mom more. No, but then also like screaming at TMZ that like Raquel is in a mental health facility, like everybody needs to back off, like she's literally struggling, and then going on stage and making fun. Raquel's not the girl for me. Like you're literally part of the problem, dude. No, but like I think, you know, it makes sense both ways. Like he's not with Raquel, so he's like making a joke about it, or it's like Raquel is the love of his life, but still Schwartz's mom. You know, right? But I but do think him like, and Raquel are together. I think so too. But it's just such an act of desperation oh yeah to, to like get in on like get cash in, in on like your fall f yes. from grace yeah if you can even call it grace what, where he was before yeah this whole saga has just really taught me like trust your instincts like i've been a good judge of character i knew i knew he was a problem no this whole saga has taught me like you don't know anything about anyone that you think that you that's know. true that you think that you know. You think you know them. You think that they know that you know, but they know that you know. And people are capable of crazy things. Are you wearing your sugar lips today, tank top? It it's, looks like a sugar lips. It's not. It does look like a sugar lips. It's Hatch Maternity. Oh, it, throwback to sugar lips when we would like layer those color tank tops. like. But it's giving sugar lips. Oh my God, I could not breathe in a sugar lips right well, now. Well, it has like the ribbed. Yes, it does. It literally looks like a sugar lips. It does. It's really cozy. Should we bring sugar lips back? I can't currently. Postpartum? Postpartum. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a compression thing. Yeah. I used to like wear it instead of a bra. Well, those were the days. Yeah. Imagine me in a sugar lips without a bra right now. I'd be in the hospital. It'd be a different kind of show. It would. <laughs> Are you ready for our next story? If this is not brought to you by Sugar Lips? No, it's brought to you by KiwiCo. KiwiCo Kiwi Co believes that every kid is naturally creative and curious and that hands-on experiences build creative confidence and problem-solving skills that can change the world. Agreed. So KiwiCo delivers seriously fun learning for kids of all ages. <laughs> Excuse me, I sneezed on it. It's true. Whether it's about science or sensory play, games, geography, every crate designed by their team of experts inspires excitement, curiosity, and moments of discovery. So KiwiCo is fun learning. They are delivering fun, hands-on projects that inspire a lifelong love of learning. So their projects spark creative confidence for ongoing tinkering and exper experimentation. Sure, you can buy a robot, but isn't it way more fun to build your own? I love KiwiCo because like one thing I've learned about, a, about being an aunt, I was going to say a nurse, <laughs> about being an aunt is like there's a lot of time in the day yeah. and kids, you know, you buy them a new shiny toy and it's seven minutes of your life like yeah. there's another couple of hours before they go to bed and KiwiCo is like delivering these projects that take a lot of time so it's like you're keeping them busy but it's also learning and, and it's engaging. developing and engaging and it really is like a fabulous thing to have just delivered to your house yes and the crate is legit like it's a big delivery 
Which is also exciting, a crate. Kids They're, love a crate. They do. After they do the project, they play with the crate. <laughs> so their crates are fun and stress-free so, free, so you can enjoy quality time tackling projects together. They're designed by experts, a team of educators, makers, engineers, and rocket scientists who brainstorm hundreds of ideas to create the most exciting, age-appropriate, and educational projects. They're tested and approved by kids. It's hard to find creative ways to keep the kids in your life busy, challenged, and off their screens. So no crate from KiwiCo's Innovation Factory leaves without approval from their toughest critic, the kids. Redefine learning with play. Explore hands-on projects that build creative confidence with KiwiCo. Get 50% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate. That's kiwico.com slash toast. That's 50% off your first month at k-i-w-i-c-o dot com slash toast. KiwiCo. Kid tested, toast approved. It's also just like a great gift for the mom in your life, you know? If you're an aunt or you have a, you know, a friend who's a mom, it's really helpful. Today's episode is also brought to you by Seed. Seed's DS01 Daily Symbiotic is a plant-based prebiotic and probiotic with 24 strain that have been clinically or scientifically studied for its benefits. It's free from 14 classes of allergens defined by the EFSA and more, including sugar-free, vegan, soy-free, sesame-free, gluten-free, peanut-free, AMPA-free, dairy-free, shellfish-free, corn-free. There's no binders. There's no preservatives. You take two capsules once a day on an empty stomach. This could be the first thing in the morning, 30 minutes before your first meal, or two hours after your last meal. It's engineered to survive your external and internal environments. So their capsule and capsule via cap safeguards viability through digestion for delivery of an average of 100% of our probiotics starting dose to your colon. A lot of times, you know, you'll take a probiotic and it won't even make its way down your digestive tract, but not with it seed. It erodes on the way down. 16 out of their 24 strains are specifically geared towards digestive health. So if digestive health is one of your goals, why don't you check out seed um people are taking a probiotic for digestive health so makes sense but there's also a lot of other benefits like skin health their daily symbiotic has four specific probiotic strains and has been shown to promote healthy skin and reinforce gut skin access so in layman's terms what can seed do for you all right you want to make big soft duties seed seed that's it. and i know they don't, they don't let us say that but between us digestive skin big soft duties so avoid gut mania and head to the trusted source for symbiotics. Start a new healthy habit today. Visit seed.com slash toast and use code toast to redeem 25% off your first month of Seed's DS01 Daily Symbiotic. That's seed.com slash toast and use code toast. T-O-A-S-T, seed.com slash toast. Thank you, Claudia. You're welcome. Our next story, Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip Real Housewives of New York Legacy cast has been officially revealed after a behind-the-scenes tumult. So Real Housewives of New York City Legacy has now turned into a Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip of Real Housewives New York Legacy. And the cast is Ramona Singer, Dorinda Medley, Luann DeLesseps, Sonia Morgan, Kelly Ben Simone, and Kristen Takeman. Sonia Morgan was not at the upfronts where they announced this yesterday. Interesting. So I feel like she has stuff going on. Yeah, but like a lot of the comments, I actually thought she wasn't in it until you just read that right now. All the comments were like, what about Sonia? So maybe she was just booked, but... Maybe she was booked. Maybe she couldn't make it. The ladies will jet off to Saline Beach in St. Bart's and stay at the same home as the wow. cast in season five did. That's, you know, Scary Exile Island. Fronte. No, that was Turks and Caicos. Really? Yeah, no. Scary Island is St. Bart's. St. Bart's wasn't um, the pirate. St. Bart's was the pirate. Oh, maybe that's... Oh, but yeah. Exile Fr No, Exile of Fronte is be cool, don't be uncool. Yeah. Okay. But wasn't it be cool about the pirate? No, that was about the man that woke up in, in Heather's bed. Okay. Okay, wait. Exile Fronte is Turks and Caicos. Okay. Be cool, don't be all uncool. Is Turks and Caicos. Is Turks and Caicos. St. Bart's is pirate. Okay. But St. Bart's is also Scary Island. Not to my knowledge. With Aviva. Season five. Aviva season five. Yeah, yeah Aviva would be season five. Mm, I'm just confused now. There's so many trips. I know, but they definitely went to St. Bart's more than once. But St. Scary Bart's, Island, Aviva wasn't at Scary Island. That's why, oh wait. That's, you two are white trash, quite frankly. Yes, that's, that's not St. Bart's? No, I don't know where that is, but that's not Scary Island. Scary, Scary Island, Island is Kelly, Kelly, which is why Kelly's back. By the way, they're recreating Scary Island. Got that's it. why Kelly's here. Got it, but no Bethany, so it's not really Scary Island. Oh, well, but okay. in Andy's book, in, 
in the point in time where he's writing, he has the idea to split up Roni to Legacy and OG. And he sends Bethany a text and is like, once the announcement came out in Variety a few weeks later, once they had come up with this idea, he sent it to Bethany and was like, I know you're over Housewives, but like the door is always open if you want to come. And she basically was like, make me an offer. Like, if the money's right, of course I'll do it. Um, and then the next day she made a TikTok saying that this announcement is boring and it's going to be dumb. And Andy was like, okay. Weird. That's so Bethany. Yeah. But she still would do it? She said she would, but I guess since she's not on it, they didn't offer her enough money. Yeah. And I, honestly, but they don't need got, her. And all of this kept getting stalled because of money. So we wound up with not even a whole show, but a ultimate girls trip because like, I don't think people could agree on money. It's just like a lot of new titles and language to give us a show that we had 10 years ago. No, and you know what? I actually don't think it's a terrible idea. I think it's probably better than like a reboot of, you know, having two Real Housewives of New York shows. Mm -hmm. The Real Housewives of New York new cast, like that looks horrible. Like it looks- I didn't watch a trailer. There wasn't even a trailer. It was just like pictures of them on a rooftop. Like it oh. wasn't, and like with a voice over like, in this town, you I know? <laughs> yeah, there wasn't any footage from the actual season. It's just like, I have the worst vibes from it. Like I don't think it's gonna be good. I actually like this idea. The Real Housewives of Ultimate Girls trips are actually performing really well. People really seem to be enjoying them on Peacock. So, I don't think this is a bad idea. I think they got a really great group. I mean, what's more random than fucking Kristen Takeman? But whatever. I guess they needed like a sixth. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this because it's like this group of women are just like unhinged and they're on vacation for like a one season only show. Like it's going to be bananas in an incoherent way. Yeah, well, that's like, what, that was in, where in we got. In a pointless way, like where it's just everyone's just like blackout drunk and spewing nonsense. And it's like, what the fuck am I watching? That's really what the place we got to with yes. Roni was. I, I was think like, this will be even worse because it's not like they have to like then go home. No, it's like a one time only thing. These women are especially like a lot of them, Dorinda, like they really want to be back in the fold. A lot of them definitely have some sort of alcoholism. So it will be like a hodgepodge. But I do think conceptually it's better than a reboot. Yeah, but I just find myself when I'm watching, and this always happens more so on vacation because everybody lets loose on vacation, yeah. like lay people as well. Then I'm just like, why am I? This There's no thread of rationale here i will say like a positive of this is that this group of friends the group of women like are actually friends like i know luann and kelly ben simone have like kept in touch like they're really really tight L L dorinda ramona and sonia ramona and dorinda so like there is history there and it's not like the a history. bunch of random women thrown in the history will make it a little more cohesive i just do hope honestly like they taper the alcohol a little bit of course like when people get drunk that's when it gets interesting but they got to a point where it was incoherent and it wasn't even fun because the next morning nobody remembered nobody even cared it's like we were all drunk whatever so there's no thread of a storyline because there's no progress it's ever being just made. like pe like chaos chaos so I hope they taper it a little bit. You know, Ramona's like very pulled back these days. So I do think she won't be like the crazy Ramona we think she is. Like she's very much in her businesswoman era. Like she's a podcast, you know? Yeah, but it, as much as Ramona's always been the shit starter. She was never the drunkest. She, no. Like, you know, her storyline actually always made it from beginning to end. Except she was always just like saying something crazy, apologizing. Start, yeah. stop, start, stop. No, it's really like Dorinda and Sonia. Yeah. But where's Luann these days? In terms of her sobriety? Yeah. I don't know. She's like crushing it doing her tour that like I feel like she's probably not drinking. Yeah. I have no idea though. I have no idea. And either. she came out with Frosé, fake Rosé or whatever. Oh, right. That was on the show. Yeah, but she still promotes it a lot. It's not fake Rosé, Frosé. It's um, it's just non-alcoholic Rosé because Frosé is frozen Rosé. Fosé then. Fosé. Yeah. yeah, yeah Frosé yeah, yeah. is frozen Rosé, yeah. Yeah. Which is disgusting. <laughs> Are you ready for our fifth and final story? Yeah. Because it's some podcasting news. Okay. And some royal news. Okay. Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York, reveals Hardly her- royal, but continue. Reveal, royal adjacent news. Yeah. Reveals her new gig, which is spilling the tea. Sarah Ferguson will be spilling the tea on a new podcast. On Monday, the Duchess of York announced the launch of a new weekly podcast called Tea Talks with the Duchess and Sarah. I hate the word tea in terms okay. of like gossip. Agree. But she's a- Brit, I get it. I get it. It, it, it works actually better. is acceptable here. Um, Fergie is co-hosting the show with entrepreneur Sarah Thompson and the friends say they won't shy away from any subject. She said on Instagram, it's about time we spilled the tea. Our brand new podcast, Tea Talks with, with the Duchess and Sarah. That's confusing. It sounds like herself and herself. Right. The, the Duchess, Duchess and, and her friend Sarah. Sarah. But it's the, like, They're both she's also Sarah. Sarah. Uh, 
it's out next week streaming on all platforms so i just obviously like this is interesting yeah like podcasting infiltrating the royal realm it's sort of royal yeah but like do you think the palace will be, have to listen to every episode? Unless does she behave in, these days? I don't know. She does. She's in with... She, right, because her kids are very much in, right? Her yeah. kids are Beatrice and Eugenie, you know? Yes, but I think she wasn't... She just got snubbed recently, but up in, at, at like maybe at the coronation. I don't know mm. if she was where she like could have or should have been. Um, but before that, she was like in. And she had like all these really nice tributes with about the queen. Oh, that's sweet. And I think in, in recent years, like she's Made more amends. so in the fold. So I feel like maybe the palace is like, you can do your own thing, but that means that she won't be talking about anything actually interesting. If she wants to remain in the good graces. Right. But like, you were the one saying like, Charles is very much in favor of like a trimmed down, smaller core royal family. And quite literally she's not a part of it she's divorced which is like you know a sin i guess um and she's also like associated with andrew so like really i don't think the royal family like needs her like she can go on the podcast and say whatever the fuck she wants you know but that just causes trouble for the family i don't think she's trying to cause trouble no for i the don't family. think but i think I she's know, a monarchist i don't know how you have a podcast as a royal and you don't cause trouble megan marcos didn't really cause trouble that's why it was boring she didn't okay she's not like on interviewed pod, not on her podcast no, on the podcast that's what i'm saying that's why i wouldn't consider her podcast like a major success it was boring as fuck okay and he, okay like, but i'm like you could say podcast like the realm of media having a media yeah. program so for them it was like podcast documentary book other uh, sit down yeah um oprah so i think it's a little odd to have a royal podcast royal adjacent podcast have the royals ever, like the core, like William and everyone, have they ever done it? Like they do interviews all the time for like the BBC and shit. Have they done a podcast? Like Kate did a podcast once. It was like mothering. Oh, it cute. Was, like, yeah, it was not tea. Right, right, right. the Duchess. Right, damn. Yeah. I was just wondering if that's like a space oh, they're foraying and to. Um, also, this is pertinent. One of the husbands, so one of the, one of like William and Harry's cousins is a girl who's married to a man who's a former rugby player and he has a podcast, a successful podcast. I think About it's like sports? rugby stuff, Safe. but there is a royal podcast. Good to know. Yeah. No, because like podcasting is now a really, it's like a reputable. But if like the Duchess was like, I'm doing a true crime podcast, I wouldn't feel like weird about yeah, it. but calling it tea. And saying we're going to spill the tea, like you, then you better fucking spill it's it. It's giving clickbait. Then you better spill the tea, but then you're out. I'm sorry. Like, it's a catch-22. You can't win. I know. And, like, I kind of want the best for her. No, me too. And she's also a writer. We reported yeah. on her historical fiction book yeah, recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, like, I really, I wish her well. Yeah. So I hope her podcast is boring, so she keeps getting invited to things. Agreed. Because her kids are, like, really in there. Yeah. Eugenie and Beatrice, like, I think they're really close with, with William and Harry. And, yeah. And they're major. Yeah. Even though they're, like, irrelevant in terms of, like, the succession. They're like major socialite queens. Yeah. And they get invited to everything and they married well. Yeah. They behave. Yeah, they do. Nice. Yeah, so. Well, welcome to the podcasting realm, Sarah and Sarah. They said they'll be having candid conversations as they spill the tea on the roller coaster of life. Now that we're done with the stories, I'm so hungry. I have to pee so badly but because wait. I just consumed so many beverages. So like yesterday morning. we were talking at the end of the show about lunch. Yeah. And you ended up having to go get your hair cut. So like I was on my own for lunch and I went to my everyday lunch place and I get the same thing every day. They have this like really good like garlic butter herb chicken. It's like grilled chicken with like a little garlic on top. It's so good and juicy. And they didn't have it yesterday. And so I was like up there, like with my dick in my hand. They were like, what chicken? And they were like, put your dick away. Yeah. This is a, you know, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> and they were like, well, you can take the grilled chicken from like the salad bar. And it was like cold and cubed. And it was like, it was like, I don't want everyone to like feel bad for me. Like it was like literally the worst lunch ever. Like I was so upset. Why didn't you get salmon? I'm just like not in my salmon era. You know, you have to really be in the mood for salmon. And I am having salmon for dinner because like I know the menu of the place I'm going. Mm. No, but why didn't you get salmon yesterday? Because, like, I just wasn't in the mood, like, for fish. Like, why, I have to have fish now? Yeah. It was just, like, I'm so, like, I really am I'm hoping they have it today. Otherwise what? There will be a riot. Breaking up my lunch, I'm trying to fight it. I could go down every night, but I'd be lying. If I said, said I could live and breathe with, with out the chicken there'd be a lot of lonely no, there'd be a lot of hungry there'd be wishing, a lot of salmon wishing and praying that you would hold me i would do most anything baby if only you would come back to me let's talk about rascal flats 
Let's, because we never got their legacy tour because of COVID. Thanks, Dr. Fauci. I actually saw one of the members, uh, Jay DeMarcus at the ACMs. He looked really good. He is a very good member. Yeah. Of He's not the one who got the DUI, no. right? That was the other backup member. But not Rascal himself. No, not not Gary, who follows yeah. me on TikTok. No, but they owe us a farewell tour. Like, I didn't forget about it, just like I didn't forget about Kelly's residency. Right. And I'm owed. We were going to follow them around the country and see we three were. shows. We were. Let me ask you a question. When we did, we saw them once uh, together in Dallas. Remember, we spent Memorial Day weekend at your mother-in-law's, which was really a fabulous trip. Um, and we saw Rascal Flats at this gorgeous amphitheater. Did they play Riot? <laughs> I would, I think not. Because that's like one of like my favorite Rascal Flats songs. I don't think that they did play Riot. What are your favorite Rascal Flats songs? It's so hard to say. Because there's so many. I mean, Here's to You is one of our favorites. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, like, I feel so put on the spot. Who miss Mayberry sitting on her porch drinking ice cold cherry Coke? Like, if I had, like, if I had, like, insane means and I could, like, throw myself a birthday party, like, Rascal I would literally, like, flats. I would, how much do you think it would be? Maybe I should start saving. I don't know, but that's, like, um... Bobby Bones and Caitlyn's wedding. Yeah, they just got uh, whoever they wanted because... But like, like Rascal Flatts performed. Yeah. Like I'm vomiting. I know. I saw them at the ACMs, by the way. I interviewed them. I saw their photo at the ACMs. Yeah. So it's kind of the same Pretty much. thing. No, like literally there's a video on her Instagram of Rascal himself singing to her. And like there's so many great Rascal songs. Love songs too. Yeah. Love who you love. With no, all that, that you have. have. Also, here comes goodbye if I want to jump off a bridge. There's also a golf tournament every year that's like for like rich, famous people that every year Rascal Flatts performs. I always see like a couple of like rich people I know like posting like on their close friends story from it. That's disgusting that they would gatekeep like And that. not invite me. And now, no, now I don't know. that It hasn't happened in a while since COVID. And I don't know if like the next time it happens or w will Rascal Flatts perform. If they do, I'm like literally, if you're rich and know what I'm talking about, like somebody invite me, okay? Same. Yeah. Whoop golf. Yeah, Ben golfs. Oh my God, please. Please. I don't know what it is. It's like in California and it's like all the rich people I know always go. And there's like always celebs. But it's like low key. Nobody like ever posts. Like it's always on close friends. Interesting. I would like to be invited. Hmm. All right, let's get some think. lunch. Okay, let's get some lunch. But Rascals, we didn't forget. I just, I'm glad that you brought that up. Because yeah. you still owe us a farewell tour if you're going to take away the sweet, sweet music that you make. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Toast of Blonde Morning Show. We do the Fast Five Stories. You need to remember Monday through Friday. Okay, I'm hungry. Bye. Love ya. Bye.